Live from the headquarters of Telesio English in Quito, Ecuador, this is From the South, and I am Swain Igri. We begin in Venezuela, where more than 300 guests from over 90 countries are joining local social movements to express solidarity with the Bolivarian Revolution. The three-day event under the title, We Are All Venezuela, is also paying homage to Hugo Chavez five years after his passing. Our correspondent, Freddie Gillingham, is at the opening session in Caracas and joins us now live. Hello, Freddie. Please describe this, the scene to us there and what we should be expecting. Teresa Carreño Theatre, the uh, main culture hub of downtown Caracas. It is indeed a very special week. We are kicking off uh, the inauguration of the World Support for Venezuela, a multifaceted event comprising of various different elements which best uh, constituent the Bolivarian Revolution on the international uh, scale. Uh, there are around 300 uh, international delegates from around 95 different countries. A huge amount of uh, people we've been speaking to here from a variety of different countries, the United States, Canada, France, and of course the Caribbean. We're very lucky to have us on the show right now, Inokli uh, Lee from uh, Dominica. He's joining us here. Inokli, it's not your first time in Venezuela. No, not my first time. You know, I studied here. You studied here? Yeah, I studied here in Venezuela. Sure. I studied health and physical activities sure. in the Cojere State. Sure. Yeah. And how long are you going to be here for this exact event this week? Well, I'm going to be there three days because they said the event was for three days. So that's why I'm going to be here for. What, uh, what, what, why do you think it's so important to be coming to support this event and obviously you're representing your country at this current point in time? Yeah, well it's important to be here so we could give support to Venezuela because it is needed We've, and Venezuela has been good to the world and we need to give back to them, we need to give them our support after all these years of helping us. Sure. Right now they need us. Great. Inukli Lee from Dominica, one of many international guests here who will be uh, visiting throughout the week. Uh, at the Teresa Carreño. Uh, it's not just Venezuelans who will be yeah. here. There'll be around yeah, 500 uh, Venezuelans representing various different uh, social movements, uh, intellectual <laughs> collectives. Um, there's going to be a whole array of uh, different events. There's around 20 stands here, um, some of which that have caught my eye. There's a Venezuelan cinema stand promoting the uh, national cinema, very socially conscious cinema at that. Uh, there's also a petro cryptocurrency stand, um, various others. There's also uh, debating arenas where, uh, which are open to the public. People can come and debate on various different uh, gender issues, youth empowerment, that sort of thing. We'll be bringing you updates throughout the day and throughout the rest of this week. Thank you so much for that, Freddie Gillingham. That's our Freddie Gillingham in Caracas at the We Are Venezuela Solidarity event, which we will continue to cover throughout today on Tell Us Your English. Other news now, Latin American and Caribbean countries of the Bolivarian Alliance of the Peoples of Our America, also known as ALBA, met on Monday in Venezuela's capital, Caracas, for the 15th ALBA Summit. They expressed their rejection of foreign interference in Venezuela. During his opening speech, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro spoke about his optimism for the future through Venezuela's upcoming elections and the launch of its cryptocurrency, the Petro. Because of previous experience, ALBA is in a place to move forward through working mechanisms that are more fixed. And we should draw out of this summit the need to meet periodically to work through our agendas and make our decisions so we can progress on vital economic, social, cultural, diplomatic and geopolitical actions of Latin America and the Caribbean and the rest of the world. The Secretary General of ALBA TCP, David Chukawana, presented the summit's final declaration, including its decision to promote a new world order. We reiterate the decision to promote the formation of a new world order that is fair, that is pluricultural, as opposed to hegemonic and unilateral tendencies, with strict respect for the peoples, for the elected institutions by them and the diverse cultures in our planet. We denounce the attempts to resuscitate the Monroe Doctrine, 
as are the attempted coups against the constitutional government of Venezuela. We also uh, bring to light the lack of moral authority to give us lessons in democracy and human rights to the country and the countries of the region. We demand respect for sovereignty and, uh, and the right of predetermination of the people. And from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Foreign Minister Camilo Gonzalez remarked on the resilience of President Nicolas Maduro, who had previously served under the late Hugo Chavez. We are grateful to Commander Chavez, who gave instructions that you, Nicolas Maduro, continue his legacy. And we recall him naming you, and now we see the wisdom in that election. Because you, Mr. President, have been subjected to unimaginable pressure by the imperial powers. You have shown great resilience and strength. And the president of Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega, said he was proud to give his support to the Venezuelan people and to President Nicolas Maduro in his current fight for peace and for the welfare of the Latin American people. Estamos totalmente seguros, convencidos. We are totally sure, convinced that the seed that Fidel and Chavez planted, that seed has sprouted fruit already and continues to multiply, sprouting more fruit. And today, this practice of gathering to establish the norms of exchange with real justice is what our America, our Latin America and Caribbean demands. In order to eradicate poverty and to be truly free and independent. Thank you, Nicolas, for being at the forefront of this battle with the heroic people, the people of Bolivar and of Chavez. The Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt, was one of many who spoke about the importance of the various institutions founded by Chavez. All of our countries, which are members of Petro Caribe, have seen the manifested benefits of this program to all people in large measure. Petro Caribe has helped reduce poverty in our region. It has created better access to healthcare for all citizens and has also created access to education. It has given us a better sense of identity in the region of Caribbean and Latin America. And there is nowhere in the world where any such mechanism has been developed so successfully. Throughout Venezuela and Latin America, people have been paying homage to former President Hugo Chavez on the fifth anniversary of his passing. Chavez died on March 5, 2013, after a battle with cancer. On Monday, there were tributes taking place throughout Venezuela including at Chavez's resting place at the Cuartel de la Montaña. Leaders from Alba TCP also attended the tribute to Chavez, along with President Nicolas Maduro. Other news now, thousands of Argentinian teachers are protesting against education reform. They marched from Congress to the Education Ministry at the Pizerno Palace in Buenos Aires on Monday as part of a 48-hour strike. This follows events last week when teachers' unions rejected the 12% salary offer made by the government, saying that it was insufficient and they are demanding a 24% increase instead. And Argentina's women's rights groups will present a bill to Congress to legalize abortion. The proposal already has the support of 70 lawmakers. Women's groups fought for 13 years to get the support of over 500 organizations. Between 370 and 520,000 secret abortions are performed in Argentina every year. Demonstrations in support of the bill are expected on the steps of the Congress. So we'll take a short break now, but join us again after this look at what our multimedia colleagues are reporting.
Welcome back. In Paraguay, the Ghana Alliance has criticized the first polls released ahead of the presidential elections due to take place on April 22nd. They claim that they have been manipulated by the ruling Conservative Party, Colorado. The Liberal Progressive Coalition insists polling given an advantage to the Colorado Party ahead of the elections are meant to create a divide between alliance members, the Guasu Front, and the Liberal Party. What do we read in this poll? First, creating a divide between the Guasu Front and Ganar Alliance, looking at the result from the senator's list and the national list, they are trying to damage the trust between parties. The poll carried out by First Analysis gives an advantage to Colorado Party candidate Mario Abdo Benitez. However, the poll did not name the Ganar Alliance candidate Efraín Alegre and instead simply listed the Liberal Party itself. Many see this discrepancy as a blatant manipulation by the ruling Conservative Party. There are some polls that show that we are heading for a tie. We see the first analysis poll as a dirty poll that does not uphold the democratic processes and tries to dupe everyone. Despite what is being seen as a campaign to demoralize the alliance, members say they have data that reveals that they are gaining ground. They remain firm in their belief that they are on track to defeat the current president, Horacio Cartes. We can see growing enthusiasm. We have data that shows we are gaining votes. This is hard data. We do not plan to publish it, but there is a surge in interest. Ganar Alliance, led by Efraín Alegre, seeks to remove the Colorado party from power. In Antigua and Barbuda, a record number of candidates have thrown their names in the ring for the March 21st elections. 53 candidates in total have been nominated. The Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party has put forward 17 candidates. The United Progressive Party is putting forward 16, with a coalition me member, the Barbuda People's Movement, putting forward one candidate to make their total 17. And the newly formed political party, the Democratic National Alliance, has nominated 13 candidates. This is the first election the DNA is contesting, which explains the record number of candidates. In Panama, a report has revealed that millions of dollars were suspiciously managed by deputies during the last government. Another corruption scandal has shaken Congress as their members have been accused of using public funds during the last government. This shows once again how the corruption scandals in Panama are going through a deep ethical and institutional crisis. People are demanding answers since they are fighting for deep reform. A report has revealed that more than $200 million destined for community aid and sport activities were misused by 70 of the 71 deputies between 2010 and 2014. The funds were received by 186 communal boards and municipalities around the country. This money might even have been used to campaign. The spending of more than 70 million cannot be justified. A deeper investigation must be done. This was not used only by one group. Every political party has used public money at least once to finance their campaigns. The controversy joins the ones made by legislative power during the same time. They irregularly used more than 400 million from the National Health Program for electoral campaign during 2014. Political elites in this country are involved in corruption scandals. It is necessary to make them confess in front of the country. They must be punished by law. We cannot expect this to be solved with another debate between the executive and legislative powers. All of them must give an answer to the country. We demand true justice and these people must give back everything they've stolen. In the last months, many corruption cases have been made public. The people, and in particular social movements, continue to promote actions to hold those guilty accountable. A Guatemalan judge has rejected former President Otto Perez's request for house arrest. Perez has been under provisional detention since 2015 over multiple accusations of corruption. The former president asked for reprieve, citing his risk of heart attack, but the judge ruled he'd have to remain in prison. Perez resigned from the presidency in 2015 after the Guatemalan Congress withdrew his parliamentary immunity. 
Así lo dictaminó el tribunal. And Brazil's Supreme Court has lifted the ban on access to President Michel Temer's bank records. The ruling granted by Judge Luis Roberto Barroso gives investigators permission to use the records in order to build a case against the head of seat. Federal police will now have access to transactions made between January 2013 to June 2017. While in Nicaragua, a project called Pro Futuro will help thousands of students and teachers in the public schools of the country. This is the Paul Harry School located in the capital Managua. The school has almost 400 students. Fabian is one of them and also one of the 80,000 who will be helped with this project that will give him access to technology through education. I'm happy because this will help us to make things quicker. It's an improvement to our education. The digital platform project has interactive versions of all the subjects. It involves giving 8,950 tablets to 161 public schools all over the country. It's very important because this will improve the children's education. It will open their minds and ease their learning. It also helps me as a teacher. It's a great help for the children and they are the most important subject of the process. The program is focused on elementary schools. In total there are 270 devices being distributed. In this last term, we are working with mobility, using the mobile devices beyond the computer labs, and it's because they learn better that way. This program is worth three million dollars, and besides helping the students, it will also benefit 3,000 teachers. Time now for another short, short break, but join us again after this look at what our multimedia colleagues are reporting. Welcome back. The leaders of North and South Korea have agreed to meet next month. The announcement comes after a high-level delegation met North, Korea, Le North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang. It is believed that Kim has also agreed to talk to the United States and freeze its nuclear program. 
On Monday, he met with the 10-member delegation from South Korea and pledged to vigorously advance inter-Korean ties and pursue reunification. The relation between the two sides has been improving since the Winter Olympics. And Venezuelan athlete Yulimar Rojas became the world's best triple junk jumper this weekend when she won gold in the World Indoor Championship in England. She held her title after jumping 14.63 meters, the furthest distance recorded by any female jumper in the world this year. In an exclusive interview with Telesio, Rojas spoke about this new triumph and about how the late president Hugo Chavez helped to develop sports in the country. To be honest, I'm very happy, very proud to get this achievement for my country, for my people. It's been very hard work. It took a long time to get to this moment and I was really looking forward to retain the title. Now that I got it, it's an immense satisfaction for me. President Hugo Chavez was a fundamental pillar for sports in my country. He did many programs to get sports, to engage with people of all social classes and to get children to understand that sports are very important for health, for human values. He always had this love for sports in Venezuela and uh, now that he's gone, he has been a great example for sports in my country. Listeriosis has hit South Africa after a precise meat contamination. We have more on that and other stories making headlines around the world. South Africans are outraged over the death of 180 people by food poisoning. 78 of the 180 deaths were infants. The government has blamed the processed meat, locally known as paloni, to have caused listeria, leading to the illness and eventual deaths. There have been 948 cases of listeria reported since 2017. It took the government a year to find the source of contamination. According to the United Nations, it is the largest outbreak of listeria in recent history. Japan's Navy has appointed the first woman to command a warship squadron. 44-year-old Ryoko Azuma will command four ships with 1,000 crew members, of which only 30 are women. Japan's military is trying to attract more women to the force to make up a shortage in personnel as the working age population is shrinking. I feel excited to be appointed as a commander of the 1st Escort Division, which comes with a heavy responsibility. I personally don't care much about my gender. I want to concentrate on fulfilling my responsibility as a commander of the Escort Division. UNICEF has said there has been a significant drop in the number of child marriages across the world. It said nearly 25 million child marriages were prevented in the last decade. One in five girls are married before they turn 18 compared to one in four earlier. The reduction is seen mainly as South Asian countries, which have the biggest adolescent population, have implemented programs to control child marriages. Especially India that has cut down child marriages by half. Dozens of men in Kyrgyzstan celebrated National Hat Day in the capital city of Bishkek. They marked the day by wearing their traditional white headpiece. The four-panel hat symbolizes the forever snow-capped peaks of Kyrgyz mountains. The hats are so important to them that they dedicated this national day to show their respects. And recently, politicians in the country proposed a bill that would criminalize disrespect shown towards the traditional headpiece. And finally, in Russia, more than 50 indigenous Ni Ninet nomads took part in reindeer sled races during the traditional reindeer herders day on the Yamal Peninsula. Contestants raced five days across, five day across a 1,600-meter track. The winners in the men's and the women's races were given snowmobiles. About 40,000 Ninets live in the Russian Arctic region, and many work as traditional reindeer, reindeer herders. <laughs> 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 
We've come to the end of this morning's news brief. For these and many other stories, you can find them on our website at tellusyourtv.net forward slash English. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Tell Us Your English, I'm Sony Gray. Thank you so much for watching.